you can bleed some things dry, you know. There used to be, before I'd ever been on stage, there was the excitement of what would it be like to play on stage. God, if I could just play on stage, it would, or if I could just record, you know, that would be another thing. And if I could actually just record a record, what would that be like if I had that? I don't have those inspirations like that anymore. Ten years later, with just working in the same box, you think, God, I'm, you know, I, one part of my brain says I'm tired of trying to come up with things in this box, you know, but I, but I force myself to do it because I know something good can come out of it. If I, if I really work inside of it, inspiration and, you know, work ethic, they, they, they ride right next to each other. When I was upholsterer, you know, uh, you, sometimes you're not inspired to reupholster an old chair. I mean, it, sometimes it's just work and you just do it because you, you're supposed to. And by, maybe by the end and you finish, you look and say, oh, that's, that looks good. That's pretty good. And that's it. And you just move on. And that's it. You know, I mean... Not every day of your life you're gonna wake up and, and the clouds are gonna part and the rays from heaven are gonna come down and you're gonna write a song from it. I mean, sometimes you just get in there and just force yourself to work and maybe something good will come out. But uh, that was one of the things was like, whether we like it or not, write some songs and record them. You know, force yourself into it. Force yourself, book, book, book only four or five days in the studio and force yourself to record an album in that time. You know, deadlines and, and things cre make you creative. But opportunity and telling yourself, oh, you got all the time in the world, all the money in the world, you got all the colors in the palette you want, anything you want. I mean, that just kills creativity. On stage, we're using, I'm using the same guitars on stage that I used in 10 years ago. And uh, I like to do things to make it really hard on myself. Uh, like, for example, I don't have, like, if I drop a pick, the, to get another pick, I've got to go all the way to the back of the stage to get another one. I don't have picks all taped to my microphone stand. I'm, I put the, the organ uh, just far away enough that I have to leap to get to it to play different parts of a song. It's not handy to, to, join, to, to jump from one thing to the next. I always try to push it a little bit farther away so that I have to work harder and get somewhere. That way, everything, all that stuff, all those little things, and there's, there's hundreds of those things like that. You know, those guitars I use don't stay in tune very well, and they're not... Um, they're not conducive. They're not what regular bands go out and play. So I'm constantly fighting all these tiny little things because all of those little things build tension, you know? And there's no set list uh, when we play. And that's the biggest one, too, to add. That each show it has its own life to it. It's, uh, that's important to do all that kind of stuff. When you go out and everything's all pre-planned and everyone sets everything out for you and the table's all set and nice and perfect, nothing's going to happen. You know, you're gonna go out and do a, a, just this boring arena set or something. So that's what that's that's why uh, all those things have always been a big uh, uh, component of the White Stripes. You know, constriction to force ourselves to create. You know, only having red, white, and black colors on any of the artwork or the presentation or the aesthetics of the band and uh, guitar, and drums, and vocals. You know. Uh, storytelling, melody, and rhythm revolving all these things around the number three. These. these all these components force us to, to create. If you get a trick, you're lying to yourself, you're gonna catch hell. And if you're testing God, lying to his face, you're gonna catch hell. 